Hello everybody and welcome to this week's uh, update. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, thank you for joining me for the, this week's update. Um, this week we're going to be talking about uh, bringing old code up to date and the uh, power pencil uh, improvements. Uh, but first, as always, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, your help, your support really means that I can spend more time on Inkscape and less time doing non-Inkscape things, you know, contracts and things that I have to do to pay, pay the bills. Um, but you guys being able to listen to what you want. Um, last week, I actually did a poll to see whether I should do the uh, tutorials that I, you know, basically showed as a possibility Maybe this is a feature that we want. Um, I have to say, more than 50% of my sponsors said that I shouldn't do it. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is, if I wanted to do that fe feature, I think it would be appropriate for me to do it as a volunteer rather than as part of the, uh, the paid for hours that, that I have. Um, but I also open it up to any other developer who might be interested to add it. I'm willing to mentor you if you're a programmer and you're interested in that specific fe feature. Okay, so let's get on to what I've been up to this week. Um, firstly, the Shape Builder tool. It is actually called the Shape Builder tool now. Th thank you to everybody that answered that poll as well. Uh, this is a piece of code by um, Osama, I think it is pronounced, uh, a Google Summer of Code pro project, uh, which unfortunately wasn't completed. And um, part of the problem with being it being completed is that Inkscape's code base keeps changing. We keep refactoring it, keep on trying to make it better. And I think Os Osama's code ended up being left behind. So uh, even when Osama came back and tried to bring it up to date, it, the task was just too hard. So I've taken his original code and I basically ripped it into up-to-date 1.3 master branch. Um, it's called rebasing, um, but this particular rebasing was ugly. I don't think I've got everything yet, uh, but what I do have is a is a branch that compiles. Um, it has all the right names. I've done some refactoring of my own to put code in different places and take out some code that I thought was wrong. Um, but I think it's important because this means that now going forwards, the Shape Builder tool is in a position where either Osama could come back and take my branch and run and finish it. Uh, somebody else could come and take the shape builder and finish it uh, or I could revisit and complete the work basically I've prepared the ground and I don't actually mind if it's me or if it's somebody else that actually finishes the shape build builder tool I think it's just important that um, the difficult part which was rebasing is complete um, okay so that actually took the first half of my week. The second half was to do with the power pen pencil. I actually created a, um, a little tips and tricks and ink drop video uh, mid midway through through the week, um, and I got to think thinking about some some of the issues that I saw as I was trying to create that video. Essentially, the the fill and stroke don't match when you create a power stroke, either a power pen, a power pencil. They, they, you can press the, the, the fill and stroke colors and styles and things, and they don't do what you think they do. Uh, a power pencil stroke is actually a fill. Um, it's a fill in the SVG, but that doesn't mean it should be a fill for you, the user. Um, and so I had to re engineer, I had to create a new feature in Live Path Effects. Uh, which allows styles to be to be shifted and changed by the by the by the live path effect itself uh, as you're setting them. Um, I had to do a lot of refactoring of uh, live path effect code, especially in the in the pen and pencil. I think it was creating a lot of styles that were just being reapplied and reapplied in ways that I don't think the code itself understood what it was doing. So that's all being cleaned up, um, and now you can. Uh, set the stroke and it sets the stroke. You can set the fill and it creates a fill object. Uh, these things are linked. You can uh, unset it. You can set opacity. Opacity was broken but before. You can copy a style from somewhere else and paste it, a paste style, onto the objects. 
Um, basically, it's a it's a more holistic approach, which allows the the object to behave like it would if it had a stroke. But in this case, it's a power pencil, power pen, power stroke, uh, live path effect. Um, it's been a, a nice piece of work. I'm, I'm actually very happy when I finally managed to get it to do all of the things that I wanted it to do. Oh man, I, I actually celebrated because sometimes you get that little bit of joy where you're just like, yeah, I've, I've got it, right? I, I've made this thing better. Um, so anyway, that's my joy for this week. Um, let's move on to stuff that's been going on in Inkscape. Um, the only news to report about the features and fixes that I didn't do, um, it's a very quiet time. I think everybody's on holiday, to be honest. Uh, Rene uh, de Hassel has been improving the Mac OS building in, in infrastructure. Nathan Lee has uh, been improving some code with some STD error, STD out work. Uh, and there's been a bit more work in the extensions and stuff. Um, that's about it. There's not there's not a great deal going on. Um, and that just leaves us to finish up. Uh, thank you very much for what, watching. Uh, please consider spon sponsoring me and uh, have a very good week. I have no idea why I'm making a recording in the middle of the night. I think I have too much energy and my body won't let me sleep. So there you go.